Standing in Kowai in front of a person who for last 101 days has been traversing across the length and breadth of the state of Tamil Nadu with the Yen Man Yen Makkal Yatra. State President of the BJP, Annamalaiji, Namaskaram. Namaste sir, Manakam sir. Today, 101st day, you were in the Singanur Assembly constituency. We have seen what is happening and I was watching. You had two union ministers and you had Vanati Srinivasanji also there. As you look back at 101 days, 226th assembly constituency, where you started, where you are, what's changed? So when we started, it was a BJP Yatra, uh, a group of BJP leaders, Kare Kartas, we all assembled in Rameshwaram with a big ambition. We wanted the party to go very deep. We wanted to take Prime Minister to the nook and cranny of Tamil Nadu, to the hearts of all Tamil Nadu. It was a very ambitious project, the way it was conceived. I don't think anybody in our country has conceived a project where you go assembly to assembly. Normally you go on a straight road or you traverse in some way or you skip certain parts. And when the idea itself was so big that people thought it will fail. But at 226th assembly constituency when we ended sir, 8 more to go, I would say this has become a movement. From a BJP Yatra, which Honorable HM Amit Shah Ji was kind enough to come and inaugurate it. To a people's movement where you see 80% of the crowd who come don't belong to BJP and they come they want to participate be a part of this history and, and understand very gently also this Yatra is for the upliftment of their lives so this massive change has happened second sir as a party our cadres have become confident so this is a state of big things where people in ruling they do big things big pandals big meetings they do everything in a big way Tamil Nadu you know yeah. it is over the top kind of state in politics. But now the Karikartas in 226 assembly constituencies, every constituency, the Karikartas putting their heart and soul. I, I, would, I would very well say now we have created a lot of leaders in the ground. Jameen Kadmi. They are in the ground. They are recognized by the people. And they feel happy that people have come for them. And they have a leader in their own locality, in their own village. 50 people came because they went and requested you should attend the Yatra. So these two things are very important for me, sir. We have created leaders in the, in the ground. These leaders will emerge in the next 5-10 years. You will see Panjayat presidents, you will see MLAs, you will see MPs. And the Yatra has become a mass movement. So you feel it's become a mass movement. Many say that it's a lot of hype on social media. And okay, in one street of one assembly constituency, you are able to create some interest and intrigue. People want to come take selfies. This is not going to happen. Many people have tried this. It's not going to translate into political gains for the BJP. How would you respond to that? The, the beautiful part of the whole thing, sir, uh, the Yatra when the opposition parties, uh, in fact, Mr. Chief Minister Stalin said on day one, it is a power Yatra, it's a Yatra of sin, hmm. day one when we started. Then they said, who will come for BJP? No crowd. Then they said, oh, crowds are coming, paid crowd. Then they said, crowds are coming, but they are coming from opposite party just to see what is happening. Then they said, people are coming because they want entertainment. Then they said, no, no, people are coming with curiosity because I'm seeing the whole face, sir. Mm. Though it is 101 day, the Yatra, of course, have taken some breaks for yes. Chennai flood and South Tamil Nadu flood. So it is literally about, we are, we are in the field for almost July 28 till now. Correct. So I'm seeing the transition of opposition parties, the way they speak. So as we speak, now the opposition parties are like, oh, fine, people have come, but I'm very sure they will not vote. So this is the last step. The next step is the acknowledgement, which only the elections can give. 39 seats of Tamil Nadu are very critical to achieve what the Prime Minister said on the floor of Parliament. 370 seats for the BJP. I am not even coming to 400 par for NDA because that adds only another 30, 40 seats, 400 par. But 370 for the BJP means Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Telangana and Odisha. 121 seats and it's not even 12 to 15 seats in this. And if you take away Odisha, then not even 10 seats out of 100. 39 seats, how many seats you think the BJP can win this time or even put up a fight? So the Prime Minister is putting his heart and soul. Um, this 2024 January, the first event he came to Tamil Nadu. Again, one more event he came to Chennai. I'm talking of this year alone. 27, he is here in Paladam this month. 28, he is in Tutkuri. 28, the PMS in Ternal Valley. Again, March, first week is expected to come to Tamil Nadu. So, so Prime Minister is leading from the front as a person. The most busiest person in our country, the Prime Minister of our nation has decided to give his time more than any other state to Tamil Nadu in terms of his visit, coming, meeting people. Now this is an indicator that PM has taken 
the results from Tamil Nadu very seriously. And we all know PM is one guy who is not very concerned about results per se. And he believes in the process. He wants to put his heart and soul into the ground. That is what all of us are doing, sir. This 39 seats, you know for a fact, I know for a fact. In 35 seats, BJP never had a history of winning. Yes. That's a fact. That's Correct. an acknowledged fact. In four seats, we have a history of winning at different points of time. 99, 2014, 2021 assembly elections in four places. Now in 35 seats, if I say something now, it might appear very bombastic. Because I've seen the ground, sir. I've seen the emotional connect. I know in a place like Dharmaburi, if I say, for an outsider, they'll say, oh, BJP is okay with, uh, in Kungu area, BJP is okay with South, but what about North? But we had the highest turnout in the North. We had the highest youth, youth in an area where they said BJP is not even there. Now, many a times when our team, we sit down, we analyze why, why it happened, what it happened, sir. Because those are the places the aspiration is more. They believe the Dravidian politics or the so-called Dravidian development model did not touch them. Because Tamil Nadu, there is a distinction between haves and have-nots. Yeah. We have given a very realistic policy assessment of alcoholism in our state, Tasmak, alternate revenue model, opening up Todi Shop. We have spoken about policemen, reforms in police. We have spoken about reforms in Land Revenue Act. We have spoken about reforms in Temple Administration, hmm. HRNC in Sri Ranga. Hmm. So now, people don't see this as Yatra alone, sir. In 226, the party has broadly given a broad outline of, if we come to power, this is what you will expect from us. So we have given very clear, distinctive idea. And we have gone one step further also. In terms of job creation, we have said, a certain percentage of jobs will be reserved for a family where no government job has entered into that family for generations. No government job from that family, a certain percentage will go to them. So everywhere, this has become a big debatable topic. DMK responds to, they don't know how will you give. DMK responds, what is your revenue methodology you please give us? They say, you don't want uh, HRNC, how will you run temples, please tell us. So many television channels have taken this as a 8 p.m. prime time debate. This and that. So I would say overall, the vision of Prime Minister, the work we have done, going forward, what BJP intends to bring to the table. We are not just a party, a uh, one-trick pony, uh, which will just criticize DMK every day, say DMK is bad, DMK is bad, DMK is bad. We have gone beyond it. We say DMK is bad. But how are we good? So please listen to us. This is what we bring to the table. So this is the overall thing that has brought a lot of youths, women, the so-called aspirational class out to see, okay, this is the party of my choice, which I am very fairly confident, sir. Even this 35 seats where we never had a history of winning, hmm. you will see a massive jump perception-wise, mind-wise for anybody sitting outside Tamil Nadu watching what is this crazy thing happening inside that state. You will see states, sir. I am I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not a person who is going over the top to say this is the number, that is the number. But I am going to say with a single line that we are going to make history in 2024. That hmm. is for certain, sir. Hmm. But you think the BJP is ready to contest all 39 seats? In sir, all 39 seats we have candidates, sir. It is not that we don't have candidates. All 39 seats we have interest. All 39 seats we have an idea because we did homework long time back. We have put constituency in charges for all the 234 constituencies months ahead of other parties. We have put parliamentary in charges for all 39 seats months ahead of other parties. So preparation is two year old. So we have anticipated, we have worked a lot of things in the ground. We have introduced a lot of leaders. We have introduced them to the people. That is one part, sir. Second part, we are very clear. National Democratic Alliance, our parliamentary board, they take a call. Tomorrow, an alliance partner is contesting in a seat. We will fight if it is there, our seat. And our cadres also ready, leaders also ready. Now, gone are the days when people say, oh, BJP might be there, but where are the leaders? Because we are very conscious, sir. We are going against five-time MPs, six-time MPs. Correct. Multiple ministers. And unlike other states, this is a state where people are in politics. You, can, you take TR Balaji, for yeah. example, Steve Parambudur. What is his age, sir? 83. When did he enter politics? How many times MP? How many times minister? So you are taking on this kind of people. So we are very conscious of the fact our opposite party is not only powerful, their candidates are not only well known, they are interested into the yeah, system very deeply. Well, very deeply entrenched. And that's why I'm asking you that a big player like the ADMK, not part of the NDA. Many within the ADMK and the political circle say that the only reason why EPS walked out of the NDA is K. Annamalai. How would you respond to that? Annamalai, I, if Annamalai is out of the equation, 
Edapadi Parli Swami and uh, ADMK will walk back into the NDA. I, I reserve my comments on this, sir. Only thing I can say, uh, every alliance partner BJP we have treated with respect. And of course, BJP we have decided that when we when we show Tamil Nadu that we are serious about it, we told 2026 we want to come to power. That is where the first friction started. Hmm. And they said, oh, how can you say that you are want to come to power in 2026? We want to come to power in 2026. Then, of course, our cadres and leaders respond. There is nothing wrong. It is a people's mandate. So I'm talking of three-year-old yeah. history. If you look back, the friction points that got generated here and there. So BJP, we believe we don't want to hurt anybody. We are very clear. But of course, we want to tell Tamil Nadu people, look, this is us. This is we as a party. And this is our plan. Tomorrow, we just don't want to come to the table and say, DMK is bad, vote for us. People don't vote like this, like that, sir. You have to say DMK is bad, but people are asking, what about you? You tell us what you are doing. What's the solution or alternative yes. you're going to give? But in this case, many would say that the moment you make it a three-way fight, DMK, ADMK, BJP, plus their allies, however you were to say, you're splitting the votes. And that will only work to the advantage of the incumbent, that is the DMK. How would you see that? That's a very traditional political way of thinking, sir. Politics changes so fast, 1991. One of the worst elections for DMK because DMK won two seats, two, two, two assembly members, uh, assembly if you take. DMK's vote share was about 20, 21, 22 percent, sir. 2014 parliament, one of the worst elections for DMK, got routed literally. DMK's vote share was about 22. So I believe DMK's vote share is somewhere between 20 to 22 as a party. As a party, that is what they bring to the table. That is their cadres vote. That is why DMK every time they stitch a larger alliance. They want Congress, they want this, they want caste-based party. They want to make it more than 31, 32, 33. And I believe the two Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu, they are between 20 to 22 percent, each of them at different points of time. So you are saying overall about 44 percent votes it. is with the Dravidian parties. That's it. So there is a clear 55 percent clearly that is against the Dravidian parties, which a newcomer like Vijay Kant will have a certain cushion of 10% for some time. Kamala Hassan will have some 6-7% for some time. A person like Seaman will have a couple of percentage, 5-6% for some time. So these are very floating votes. A newcomer it goes, it waits. Again a newcomer comes, it goes. So you see this, this, is a, this is a voting base that keeps shifting. Now this 55%, now I believe it is more than 55%, it is waiting for a stable third party. He doesn't want a party that comes comes in the horizon, be there for a certain point of time, vanishes. This 55% will decide. So why am I bothered about split in votes, sir? So my head and our head, the party is very clear. 55% of vote is outside the loop. That, of course, 20% might vote for one Dravidian party because he thinks this Dravidian party is bad, I'll vote for this guy. That's the alternate model of Tamil government. But I believe that 55% are not Dravidian party's hardcore voters. They're waiting. That is what elections have told us at different points of time. So you are saying that it will split four ways or three ways. 100%. And anybody who gets closer to 30% in this three-way fight gets the mandate. But would you also accept that for that to happen, not just an anomaly needs to contest, but beyond the Prime Minister coming regularly, the Prime Minister also needs to contest from Tamil Nadu. Would you think the dynamic will change if PM decides to contest from Tamil Nadu? Sir, 20, uh, four, 2004, if, if I may be very honest, sir, though I belong to, uh, I'm a Karikarta, you know, I came into the politics for Honorable PM. I'm here because of Honorable PM. I sweat it out because of Honorable PM. Now, 2004 was, a, was, was an election where candidates was 50%, party was 50%. 2009, candidates 50%, party 50%. When PM Modi ji came in, Modi ji, party 60%, candidate 40%. 2019, Modi ji party 80%, candidate 20%. This time I am giving it in writing. Modi ji BJP party 95%, candidate 5%. So the shift we are seeing where candidates are becoming redundant across India. They are like, look, Modi ji has to come to power. He has to cross 400. What I have to do? I have to vote BJP. This is the model I am seeing in Karnataka. I am seeing in all states of this country, sir. I am sure the same model is going to work now. So every place, where I specifically mention a lot of our leaders speak, look, candidate for you doesn't matter. You are voting for Modi. That is Modi's guarantee. We are not giving you candidate's guarantee. Candidate is answerable to the party. We have a system to monitor. Candidate is answerable to Modi ji. Modi ji is answerable to you. Simple calculation. 
So 95% this time in Tamil Nadu, across India, the pattern will be here. 95% Modi ji party, 5% candidate, because they know this democracy is going through a flow now. It is going through a flow where the trust on Modi ji is the pulling factor. But if PM were to agree, like the last time when he said Vadodra and Varanasi, so if he decides saying Varanasi and say Tirupur or Coimbatore, you think that will make a difference? Will sir, that change? Sir, it is a party scholar. Let me also ask you, would Annamalai and the BJP cadre here want the PM to announce one of the constituencies and contest from Tamil Nadu? Sir, to show the intent sir, you that know, the BJP is serious. You know I am not a very parochial person in terms of mindset. I would ideally want PM to contest in, PM to have the same impact in all the 543 seats as if the PM is contesting. Correct. Every part is important. I would ideally prefer PM to have the same impact in all the 39 seats as if he is contesting. Now the, now the question before me is, can we create the same magic even if the PM is not contesting? Hmm. That is what the whole toil and hard work are. If PM is contesting one of the seats, why this hard work and toil? Because then that's when the exponential benefit that the BJP needs in Tamil Nadu to breach this wall it will come. There is, a, there, is a, there is a sentiment which says if the PM is so intent on uh, his commitment to Tamil Nadu and the South beyond Karnataka, then he should contest from here. And 2024 is the best time. I'm, I'm asking you. You are you're planning I, something very big no, in Palala. I, so. I, I, my personal belief, sir, people of Tamil Nadu has gone gone beyond that measure of only if somebody is contesting here, then probably I, I know that that person is trusting my soil and my people. Mm. Now the emotional connect with PM is so deep. You, you see, sir, the 11 day, 11 day Anistan and PM did. Yeah. I was coming last, to that, Ram Mandir. How last, much of an impact? Huh? Okay, please. Sorry, sir. The last two days of his Anistanam happened in Tamil Nadu. Mm. And like many Karikartas, I also had the privilege of watching the whole thing happening very closely as a Karikarta from the outside, what is happening. And that I would say is something that has moved the needle. Probably we all say the last straw on camel's back. You put that last one, the camel will break. Kasi Tamil Sangam, Saurashtra Tamil Sangam, PM doing everything for Tamil Nadu culture, taking the language across, Tirukural, of course many things. But that, so you could see the toil in his face. A person coming here, fasting, sleeping in the floor in Rameshwaram, going to uh, Sri Rangam, present in the Kambar Mantapam, which, no, which no, no Tamil politician or Dravidian politician cared about. The whole thing, what we, what we talk now, we believe Probably it is the last straw on camel's back. Of course, Ram Temple is a big thing in Tamil Nadu. It is. Politicians will say, oh, Ram Temple and Ayodhya, how is it going to benefit us? Do you think it is going to benefit us? No, sir, it is not about you build one temple and the votes is going to come. So, BJP doesn't believe when you switch on the switch here, lights will glow here. It is not that theory, sir. The theory is two things. One, Ram is so connected to Tamil Nadu as is connected to the rest of our Bharat. Because this state, what has happened very purposefully, very deviously, very devious. The Kambaramayanam, if you look at, you go to all small towns of Tamil Nadu, you will have a Kambaramayanam club. club. Mm. I, don't think, I don't think any other god has got a club. Or any other, a book that is written for a particular god has got a club. So, and if you look at Kambaramayanam, it is across the world, some of the finest Kambaramayanam speakers reside in Tamil Nadu. Now, why? Very purposefully, the Dravidian politicians decided, this has to be given a stop. This cannot allow to penetrate. People cannot have Kambarayam, Kamayam conference like a weekend thing or people cannot do this uh, chanting everything. That is when very deviously they, they chappelled, they brought a chapel mala to Lord Rama. They said Lord Rama is an outsider. Why Lord Rama is so viciously in the Dravidian politician's mind, so viciously treated as an outsider, so viciously because they knew Kambaramayanam and the impact Kambaramayanam resonates with Tamil people. And the way you see the Kambaramayanam clubs in a small town, they very carefully, very deviously said, let us stop this whole thing. Let us portray him as an outsider. I am very, very sad and sorry that when, when the whole thing happened, a counter-cultural political movement could have started in a matter of months. If there is an opposite counter-cultural movement then, they could have literally stopped it. There was a huge gap given till Prodasi Talever MGR came and openly he said, that, that he is a pro-Hindu, yeah. then Madam Jailalitha came. So that gap was filled by these devious people. Now we are breaching that gap after many, many decades now to say, look, Ram Temple, okay, let us talk about Rama now. Of course, Ramana Swami has got a connect. Of course, Srirangam has got a connect because the Urchav Murthy inside is a personal god of Lord Rama, which Lord was Rama. gifted to Vibhishana, it came. These are two, sir. We have 
150 Lord Rama temples in Tamil Nadu which are 1000 years old. And this Yatra, we have visited about 30, 32 of it. You go to Dharmaburi, Dharmaburi, there is a place where Rama did, did Tirtha, he did a Shiva Puja for Lord Shiva, there is a temple. Sir, of all places, you go to Arani, Putra Kamateshwara, where Lord Rama's father, the great king, he came, he did a tapasa because he wanted a children. He did a heaven. Lord Rama was born because in Arani, in the Putra Kamateshwara temple, his father did a tapas. Then you go, you, you skip one district, you go near Tanjavur, you go to Suryanar temple. When Jadayu, for Jadayu, the last rite was performed by Lord Rama in Tanjavur. So you have a Jadayu Gundam there. So it, it is beyond my mind how this so called a politician for about two decades. They very deviously covered everything. So let me ask you, is it the Ram Mandir, Ram Lala, Pran Pratishtha in Ayodhya or is it the Prime Minister's Bhakti and Anushthanam that you think has, as you said, the last straw on the camel's back? So we are very emotional people and Tamil Nadu is a state that highly reverse a saint. That, that, reverse, that reverse a person who has forsaked everything for doing a moral duty. This is a, this is a land of Nayanmas and Alvars. Nayanmas and Alvars are not names, sir. Hmm. They are, they are saints because they have forsaked a lot of things to achieve a, achieve a morality in the society. And Thiruvalluvar, you talk all the big names here. So, we don't treat them as scholarly, intellectual. This is a state that reverse, reverse the detachment part. The state always loves somebody's detached. And Modiji's sense of detachment. Of course, the sense of detachment in everything he does, but very specially, the 11 day Anustanam he did, absolute sense of detachment, sacrificing food, the way he behaved in Rameshwaram when he stayed in the mutt, mm. where the Swami came out and next day he gave an interview that SPG people have removed the cart mm. and he slept in the floor. Yeah, and, and, no. and, and you see, you see Ramana Swami temples are even to all the all the Tirtha Tirtha Sestra, the Tirtha well, where he himself poured water, did the holy dip. He respected the tradition of that land. He went to the last point, Arichal Munai. He went there, stood there with reverence, bowed down. Then then all the, the many important things the PM did, Kambara, Kambara Mantapa where he said, in our national convention PM said, the moment in his mind, when he sat in that Kambara Mantapam, listening to Kambara Ramayana, from some of the greatest speakers in Tamil Nadu, he said that is the moment he will carry till his last breath. He, he particularly recalled this occasion in our national convention. He said that will be in my blood. So this is something that Tamil people know, oh, this our PM is a person of detachment. So this Ram temple, yes of course it is an occasion sir. But the way a person took his responsibility and did Prana Pradishta, this has moved mountains in Tamil Nadu. So will you say, final two, three questions, I know you have positive time, it's a late in the night conversation that we are having with Mr. Annamalai, but he still has got engagements into the VRs. So let me ask you this, is this election now in Tamil Nadu between those who want to eradicate Sanatana Dharma and those who want to bring back the temple culture? and to free the temples from the stranglehold of government. Is this now, that's how you would you draw this? So we have, uh, we have unbuilt the cat and we have let the cat roaming in the streets now. So this was a touchy topic which nobody touched for a long time. And we have touched a lot of things in the Yatra time including uh, some of the words that is put outside the temple, what BJP is going to do about it, what BJP is going to do about HR and see the plan and everything. So mm -hmm. now, even Periyar statue out at Sri Ranga, yeah, we, we'll we will it take out. it respectfully to a common place and mm -hmm. we don't want demean to anybody. But that doesn't have any provision to stand outside a temple. And when we said it, a common man, even many from the Dravidian party, they said this is the right approach. We are waiting for somebody like that. And this is the right approach. Let people go to a common place that whoever wants go on Garland. But in a, in a, place, in a place where faith is worshipped. Let us not hurt that. Starting from this, sir, uh, HRNC, the mismanagement, the, the large, large amount of bunglement they have done. HRNC is down. happening even in your uh, previous avatar as IPS where you served in Karnataka also. this Bungled one. Bungled today you are seeing in Karnataka hmm. uh, some of the greatest disservice they are doing in that holy land. We are seeing, sir, sir. Now I would say a combination of Sanadana Dharma eradication, which not only Udayanidhi Stalin spoke, which also the DMK government partly was doing. Rama Prana Pradishta, sir. We had to go to Supreme Court, knock the door in the midnight, get our petition listed at 10.30 in the morning, get an order at 10.40, serve it to DGP by about 11.15. Then make sure the Prana Pradishta went 11, 11.30. Even for the finance minister, Madam Nirmala Sitaraman, who was inside a temple that doesn't have anything to do with HR and she, she was prevented from watching. So people are watching it. 
and they know okay i don't want this people and of course bjp has got a plan of course this is an important issue sir but we put it in a way that is understandable to a common man a common person has to understand that's very important not the intellectual class a person who is in a village who has got a small deity who is very concerned that that the, that the way he worships his kula devata temple over centuries should not be affected now hrnc is entering that because hrnc act says even in kula devata temple there is a dispute i will come inside yeah. so overall i would say sir this election sanadana dharma eradication and stranglement of government temples is going to play a major role in the way people people vote and make their choice of voting hmm. but that could also polarize the vote those who believe that you are talking only hindutva temples the others may not come you i are, are you okay or are you talking a language that polarizes the voter because that's another accusation that you are pushing a hindutva agenda now so you are not looking at sabka sath sir now we have to understand sir let us define hindutva let us define hindutva now i respect my muslim brother and sister i respect my christian brother and sister if somebody goes and touches their church or their mosque i'll be the first person to condemn and i say that everybody should have the same right a muslim brother and sister going to a mosque free the imam of that mosque deciding how the mosque should be run or a christian father deciding how his sunday should be uh, what kind of donation the church should get what is the kind of sacrifice offering they should do the same right i think a hindu temple should also have so if people call i am polarizing they should get their head checked if any of the opposition party here in tamil nadu they say anamalai is polarizing i am not doing they were only polarizing till now so what they were doing till 2024 is polarization not as and secondly sir and bjp as a party we celebrate iftar it's a party bjp tamil nadu we celebrate iftar but what we do is we invite all our muslim brothers and sisters we say let us all of us who have our faith who what we what we practice let us all celebrate each other faith by not copying each other here we have politicians who will just remove vibhuti because they want to go to a minority conference we don't do that even when we host an iftar i will be myself and i want my muslim brother and sister to be themselves because we believe this is the real value of secularism last year we hosted christmas by the official bjp our leaders came everybody came we called the fathers and celebrated so tamil nadu over a point of time the politicians believe hosting an iftar means you have to do appeasement hosting a christmas means you have to do appeasement now when we do something different it is very shocking to the established pattern of political thinking they say who is this anamalai or who is this bjp who are doing hindutva which is absolutely wrong which is a thorough misunderstanding and more importantly the muslims and the christian brothers and sisters of tamil nadu like our approach hmm. they say if they are so conscious about their religion they will be conscious about my religion also they will not take mine for granted since they are taking their for granted interesting analogy now 27th prime minister is coming there is something special that's planned do you want to tell us a little bird told me that this is a never before in tamil nadu not just tamil nadu all india what is the special thing sir i don't know the party is very ambitious and they want to receive pm in a very big way and uh, i don't know sir they have taken 1200 acre and the conference pandal itself is close to 530 acre it is it is just a some of the great thing our party is attempting our leaders and karyakartas and uh, the the crowd and the people who come out of love for prime minister narendra modi ji will be the highest tamil nadu would have seen after 1947 and uh, of course when i come on national television when i make the statement i have to prove this in about 6 days time so i'm very consciously measuring my word and i'm talking the 27th of february will be historic because we are very confident that will be the turning point for all the hard work we have put and of course the joinings do happen you are seeing a lot of people joining tomorrow somebody will join next week somebody will join and uh, bjp has become a preferred joy choice of people who want to come the professionals the technocrats and we have a startup cell sir how many political parties can claim and the person who has joined our startup cell the head who is heading our startup cell is an ex intel engineer who has got patents to his name and he quit everything in us one day he was standing in our office he said i am inspired by modi ji i want to do i am sacrificing my whole thing what should i do we said okay let us start a startup cell mm. so we run hackathon so do you believe a political party in tamil nadu is running we run hackathon we want to solve some of the rural problems the party is running a hackathon challenge so we are completely we have a sport cell sir so we have three ex padma shri in sport who are part of tamil nadu bjp sport cell we have seven olympians who are part of our tamil nadu sports cell we are reinventing politics in a way because we believe professional should come in and without fear or favor they should do what they are doing outside 
and we say let us not do politics in a sports cell you take modi's vision to the village startup cell you take modi's vision to the village so so everything outcome will be in 2017 so i have to read between the lines are more than a million people expected to come on 27th are there going to be some significant people joining the bjp on that day and is the pm going to make a big announcement about lok sabha 2024 <laughs> the pm sir is pm sir uh, you know that uh, uh, his speeches are always electrifying of course it's, it will be the first political speech in tamil nadu uh, after 2021 so pm is yet to attend a political event in tamil nadu he has attended a lot of public events yeah. so there will be a first political event so all of us are watching with with a great amount of interest and second of course joinings do happen sir but that is not the forum where we say please come and join it happens in party offices in delhi and in terms of numbers let me just keep my uh, mouth shut for the day because i believe action should speak louder than words here uh, let let our actions be strong than our words and it will be historic sir finally final question we will all watch people are also expecting a lot from you those who are coming to your padayatra those who are starting to support you they have a, a whole host of expectations so are you up for that challenge very tough sir they expect so much um, the, the 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 good thing and bad thing uh, in the current bjp now is all of us are measured to modi ji mm. <laughs> you have to be like modi ji at least even 10% of what modi ji does you got to be punctual discipline uh you got to be very emotional honest honest open uh proactive forward looking so so what modi ji has done he has completely changed politics so of course we all carry the expectations of modi ji which, which i believe the expectation of modi ji is being transferred to us we are up for it sir else we will not be in politics and we are modi ji's foot soldiers and we'll get it done sir day minus 15 we spoke with anna malai day 0 we spoke with him day 50 we spoke with him day 101 we are speaking with him and very very soon after a few landmark announcements ahead of lok sabha 2024 perhaps on the campaign trail we look forward to speaking with you again on another very kind of you